In this video, we're going to study the sounds of Warren D. Martini. Notice the use of the flanger in this live performance from Rock Palace 1983. Let's break it down. What I noticed in this concert, I can never, never pinpoint the tone that he had. And then finally in 2020, <laughs> it was the flanger. The heavy use of the flanger, but not like a Van Halen type of flanger, but a very subtle tone of a flanger is his lead tone that makes this a unique guitar tone for uh, Warren D. Martini back in 1983. I'm going to share with you the tone secrets of Warren D. Martini. Let's get started. You'll notice on some parts it's kind of warbly. I was always like, what is that warbly sound? It wasn't the chorus, and I must have tried a chorus, a flanger, a phaser, way back in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s trying to come up with this tone. But then in coming up with this tone in 2020, I nailed it, and it's a flanger. I'm going to break it down for you and show you exactly how I did it and give you the live Warren D. Martini tone of 1983. You'll also notice when he starts to do a uh, quick alternate picking. That's not fast, but when he does a little alternate picking, you can hear that subtle wave of the flanger. And that is what pick, uh, strikes me as a marvelous tone uh, back then. So where Eddie Van Halen used a phaser to cut through the lead and as a boost, Warren's using the flanger. And Jordan Lynch also used the flanger for a little bit in 1984. You'll notice on this particular fast run, you can hear it like a subtle wave in his plane. That is a wave from a flanger. And I'm like, how is he getting this tone? I love this tone, it's a live tone. So I got pretty close to it, and you're gonna hear my little demo, as you've already heard. And uh, I can't wait to share with you this. And we're gonna break down some of his licks. Now, I don't pretend to play like Warren. I never thought I could play like Warren, but he's got some awesome, fierce licks. I'm gonna try to tackle it. And if you can do better, by all means, do it. Do it. <laughs> Now tell me, does he remind me of Jordan Lynch? Look at the way he holds his right hand, his right pick, with his fingers all splayed out, and he's holding the pick with the pointy, pointy part towards the bridge, and he's picking with the round part of the pick. Do you notice it? Look carefully. I'd like to know what you guys think in the comment section. Let me know what you think you hear uh, in this live tone. Am, am I just making it up? Uh, is it just a uh, Marshall, Laney, or Randall that he's using? Is he using some type of uh, chorus effect? Do you think it's a flanger, a phaser even? What do, you, what do you guys think? I hear a phaser, so that's the tone I, I'm giving you with a phaser. 
Let me know what you think. Now tell me, does he remind you of Jordan Lynch? Look at the way he holds his right hand, his right pick, with his fingers all splayed out, and he's holding the pick with the pointy, t pointy part towards the bridge, and he's picking with the round part of the pick. Do you notice it? Look carefully. Welcome back, this is Tony Fuentes, and today's featured guitar tone patch is from Warren D. Martini and Robin Crosby, Crosby. <laughs> but mostly uh, Warren D. Martini from the legendary live rock concert Rat at the Rock Palace, recorded in 1983, and this tone uh, stood out for me in particular because I heard a distinct warbly type of tone whenever Warren was playing leads. And when he was muting some strings from string picking, there was a distinct tone that I could never figure out what it was. I didn't know what it was, if it was an amp or uh, an effects pedal or what, or if it was just the mix from the recording. But long story short, I tried in the 80s and the 90s and 2000s and the 2010s until 2020. So this was recorded in 1983, and it took me until 2020 to finally nail down what I think, I believe, was that distinct tone in his tone, or effect, rather, in his tone, and that is the use of the flanger. As you've already heard my demo, my comparisons, uh, there's a slight distinct flanger tone, not as elaborate as Eddie Van Halen would use uh, around 81, 82 during uh, Unchained Mean Street album. Um, but, and that went, or hear about it later, that is a very distinct, heavy flanger tone. But this tone is very subtle, that where Warren uses it for the rhythm as well as lead playing. And so for that, um, I thought this would be a great opportunity to break it down. But rather than, um, um, start from scratch I thought you know what let let me show you the settings intact the way they are so you just go ahead and follow the screen uh, real quick I'm using the boss Eban JS 10 which has the boss GT 100 effects processor already built into this thing all right so with that look at the knob positioning as you would a clock if you do not have my exact settings don't worry I'll get you there I pretty much believe anybody can come up uh, with a very close uh, recreation of this tone based on my settings. So my settings will work with whatever you have. All your stomp boxes, all your pedals, rack mounts, computer based uh, uh, effect software, as well as uh, all the fractal audio 
uh, Crackle Audio 1, 2, 3, your Line 6 Pod, and your Line 6 Helix. Uh, whatever you have, I'll get you there, alright? So, let's continue. And as you can see, these other tones I already have, uh, those will be coming up to you. I just finally created a Motley Crew 83 tone, but someone asked me to do a Motley Crew uh, Theater of Pain tone. Uh, so that was coming too, but I did create the Motley Crew 83 tone. Uh, so if you want that tone patch also, let me know. I have a brand new George Lynch Ramona 2014 tone, which I love. You'll hear that one real soon. But I have a whole bunch of tones coming for you. And uh, again, this is the first tone I'm unleashing right now uh, in a while because I've been busy. And But it's good to be back. Alright, so, but Tony, where are the tones? Alright, let's go ahead into the menu. And we're going to select an amp. And we're going to be using a clean twin, which is, I believe, I'm using a... Let me double check here what this is. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, the clean twin is based off the Fender Twin Reverb. You're all telling he doesn't use a Fender Twin. No, bitch. Listen. I'm using... <laughs> I'm using a clean twin because I wanted to emulate the guitar tone. I wasn't trying to be, I have to match the exact amp. No, you don't have to match the exact amp. Today's technology, you have a gazillion amps, amp models to choose from that pick what's best for you, for your ear. I could have went with a Marshall. I could have went with a Laney or a Randall. I'm choosing a Fender Twin Reverb because using this amp, I got as close as possible to this live 1983 tone. So that's the amp I'm choosing. Uh, if you want to play with a different amp, first lock this in, uh, lock these settings in, and then go ahead and tweak with your amps. You may have or find a better amp, by all means play with it. All right, but in this case, I'm using a clean twin, a Fender Twin Reverb. So just follow the screen. Uh, you'll see my gain is at 120. That's all the way full bore, full maxed out. So you may have a 10 on your gain, use a 10. But for me, it goes up to 120, so that's my gain. And my effect level for this is at 40. What's next? My base for this tone, I have it at 34. Middle at 72. My treble is at 58, and my presence is at 63. What's next? See, we're gonna go through this tone back really fast. Now, if you do not have this on your menu, that's totally fine. It, you will have this if you have a Boss GT10, GT100, GT1000. Boss e -band. if you have any of those Boss FX processors, you will have this on your menu. You should. But if you do not, don't worry, it won't affect your tone. It just happens to be in my menu. That's what I have as a default. Bright, I have off, and my T-Comp, I have it at zero, but it's on. Next in the chain, I do have a compressor. I'm using the compressor, and there's my compressor. I'm using a sustain, or I'm sorry, at the sustain, <laughs> The sustain for the compressor is at 50, uh, right in the middle, 12 o'clock. The attack is at 50, my tone is at zero, and the effect level is at 58. So I do have a compressor. Again, this is my emulation of a live rat tone from 1983. Now those are all my overdrive and distortions. Obviously you look in the bottom right, it is off. So this tone patch does not utilize any overdrive or distortion. That's not to say you cannot come back later and play with your overdrive distortion. Maybe you want more gain, more distortion. You'll come back over here and start fiddling around. I chose not to do that because I didn't need it. I thought I got a pretty good match as is. What I'm getting all my distortion from is from the, um, the gain on the amp. That's why I didn't use any overdrive. All right. Let's see what else do we have on this tone. As you can see, my overdrive distortion on the bottom right, it's off, so don't worry about those settings. I do have noise gate. My noise gate is right at 50%, right at uh, 12 o'clock, so there is your noise gate. Now, I got a lot of crunch, a lot of crunch from my uh, distortion on this tone with the EQ. So, you can do that. As a rule of thumb, if you have a lot of gain, and you're using some gain from your EQ, there's no need to put any overdrive distortion pedal. If I took the EQ off, then I would probably go to my overdrive distortion pedals and try to get more crunch. So if you do not have EQ, don't be alarmed. That's when you go ahead and pick either a higher gain amp. Remember, I'm using the Fender Twin Reverb. Full maxed out on the gain. 
I'm just trying to explain to you really fast. If you do not have EQ or these EQ settings to get, to get that extra crunch, don't worry about it. Go to your distortion pedals, pick a nice distortion with a lot of crunch, and use that instead. Or pick a high gain amp in lieu of the distortion pedal. So you can always get there. You just have to decide what you want. A high gain amp or a low gain amp. Uh, EQ with gain, or you have no EQ, then you crank out your distortion or overdrive pedals. You can substitute, okay? So for my low gain, I have it at minus one. My high gain, I have it at zero. And my effect level for this, I have it at plus two. And we do have it on. See the bottom right? Next in the EQ chain, my low mid frequency is at 500. My low mid Q is at one. And my low mid gain is at plus four. See, we're going by this tone really fast. Uh, my high mid frequency is at 4.00. My high mid Q is at 1. And my high mid gain is at plus 7. And lastly, in the EQ chain, my low cut is at flat. And my high cut is at flat. Okay, this is the secret weapon that I call. Because I can never figure out what it was. It was in there somewhere. Remember, this is back in 83, 84 when I saw the concert live. I'm like, how do you get this tone? Back then, I had a little effects pedals. I could never get Warren's tone. Uh, I could play rat songs, jam along to rat songs, playing cover bands, playing rat songs, but I didn't sound like rat. All right, I sounded like Tony. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be using a flanger tone. So I'm sure everybody has a flanger. And... Um, this, these are my settings. So let's go into the flanger. See the bottom right? It says on. That's what I have right now for my flanger. Remember, this is a boss flanger. This emulates the boss pedal. I think it's a purple pedal. It's the boss flanger. I don't know the exact name of it, but it's a boss flanger. But any flanger will do. My rate is at 56. So if you have a rate, look at it. That's what? 1 o'clock? 12, 30, 1 o'clock? So that would be your rate. My depth is at 34. That's what, 11 o'clock? So look at it that way if you do not have my exact knobs. My resonance on the flanger is at zero and my manual is at 50, right in the middle. That's my flanger. All right. We have two more settings and that's it. My delay for this, I have my Warren Demartini delay at 422. My feedback is at 30. My high cut is at 4.00. And my effect level at 58 really fast when i want to get into a little bit more soaring leads or searing leads rather uh with a little bit more sustain i'm going to crank out that, that effect level to like 68 between 68 and 72 for me so if you want more delay it's the effect level if you want more delay right now mine's at 58 but if you want a little bit more delay for your leads you can go anywhere from for you know it's a preference but I can go anywhere between 64 and 72, and I'm happy to use that effect level delay for my lead playing. But right now as it is, I can use my 58 effect level for both lead and rhythm. I'm just saying if you want a little bit more saturation of the delay, uh, just play with your effect level. But keep everything the same, and you're good to go. And lastly for this tone, we're gonna be wrapping it up here. I have the reverb at uh, plate. And if you look really fast, I have hall, room, and ambient. These are the only ones I have. You may have 10, 20, 30, 40 reverbs to choose from. And by all means, play with it. You may have a better reverb, and it may sound better. Um, kind of hard to hear reverb, though, when it's a concert setting uh, from the video that I took, or I grabbed the tone from. But that's what I'm using. I'm using a plate reverb. My reverb time is at 3.0, my high cut is at 4.00, and my effect level is at 36. That right there, let me exit out of that, rounds off, see those are my uh, uh, settings in a nutshell. And see the uh, up here? We have that off, remember we're, we're using no overdrive distortions. So we've already went through the amp, the compressor, no overdrive distortion, we do have a noise gate, I went through all the EQ settings. There is the FL for flanger, there's my delay, and there's my reverb. Let's get out of there. And there's the Rock Palace, where I got the tone from. And these are all the... That's pretty much where... Oh, you, didn't, you weren't supposed to see those either, but you saw them now. I do have a Queensryche 85 tone and a Queensryche 86 tone. I got several Rockabilly tones, which I will share with you real soon. Alright, 
If you have any questions, comments, or feedback from this video, if you like more videos like this where I'm talking, doing voiceovers, uh, by all means let me know. Um, I'm using my phone for the first time for the microphone. I think it sounds pretty good, and so I'm liking it. And so, let me know what you think. This is the first for me. So long story short, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, or requests, leave them below. Thank you all new subscribers who have visited my page and checked me out and clicked on my videos and so forth. Uh, your support and your kindness mean a lot. Go ahead and leave me a thumbs up, leave me a thumbs down, doesn't matter. If you don't like my video, go ahead and send it to uh, one of your haters and that way they'll get 10 minutes of their life, they'll never get back. So it makes no difference. But just click on my video and show me some love and say, hey, give me some more tones and I'll get you some more tones. That is my Rat Rock Palace tone. I love this tone. I think it's a lot of fun to play pretty much the entire first album or, the, or I think the second album, Out of the Cellar. This is a great tone to play Out of the Cellar along to. Uh, using this with the flanger. It's just a lot of fun. So if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Uh, I'll see you folks real soon. Sorry for my absence, but I've been busy recording, busy making a bunch of new tones, and again, this is the, it's just the process of editing and recording, and then juggling Pippi and so forth. And then, uh, life happens. <laughs> Alright, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you folks real soon. Uh, don't be a stranger and if I haven't gotten back to you, I will. So, I'm not uh, ignoring any of you, uh, but I'll do my best to get back to all of you at some point uh, with your uh, videos and responses and requests and so forth. Look for more tone videos in the coming days. And that's it. Thanks everybody and I hope to see you folks real soon.